Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhiannon and today I'm going to be unboxing the Penguin Classics Marvel Collection. Earlier on this year, Waterstones revealed this collection and as soon as I saw the books, I knew I had to pre-order them. They have obviously arrived in this hefty box, it is very heavy, and now I'm definitely scared about the size of these books, but I'm so excited to finally have them and I decided to film this unboxing for you guys so that you could see what they're like and maybe help you decide whether you want to buy them or not. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button to join my little corner of the internet and do go ahead and click the like button if you are a Marvel fan like my myself. I feel like I have done enough talking though so let me just get this box open so that I can show you guys the books. Wow this is packaged very well, it is full of these kind of air bags to make sure that the books aren't damaged which is actually really great. Oh my gosh you guys, these are huge. Wow, okay. <laughs> I actually don't know where to start. Let me just get these out of the box to show you guys. Here's a little sneak peek. Very reflective, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited already. And yeah, these are just absolutely <laughs> insane. And I'm so, so happy to own these now. These are such cool additions and they are gonna look amazing on my shelves. The first thing that I'm actually gonna do is take off the plastic film off of all of these books just so that I can show you them without any glare from the ring light. And I think what I'll do is go through them one by one individually just so that I can give you a more in-depth look at all of them and see what they're like. So first up we have Captain America. This is the front cover. This is the spine and then this is the back cover. Now one thing that I absolutely love about every single one of these books is that they have gold gilded edges which just look insane. They also work really well with this book in particular because the foil on the front is gold as well so they do kind of match. I'm not sure if the other two books have the gold foiling. I will obviously find out once I unbox these for you properly but I love this one just at first glance. I think it looks so cool. It does also say on the front cover that it's part of the Penguin Classics Marvel Collection. It has the Penguin logo and the Marvel logo on it as well which I love both of those. They're so iconic. And of course it has the names of the writers and the artists for these comics as well. Right, let's take our first look into the book. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, straight away I'm blown away by these end pages. I know that this is Red Skull. I can't quite make out who this person is just on first glance. Any hardcore Marvel comic fans are gonna hate me right now but I am definitely a newbie to the comics. I have loved Marvel movies for years, my partner loves Marvel movies as well, we go to see every new release together and we are kind of obsessed actually but neither of us have actually read any of the comics which is crazy but I'm hoping that with this collection I can dive into them and get more immersed in the world and get more information and become more knowledgeable about the MCU as a whole. Moving on we come to this little page we have an introduction which again looks really nice. I think you can see it a little bit better there and then we do have a little section here that talks about Captain America and the Penguin Classics Marvel editions as well. So for Captain America it says debuting in 1941 almost a year before the events of Pearl Harbor Captain America was initially conceived by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby as a pop culture argument for US intervention in the European war against fascism. His fortunes faded with the end of that conflict but in the 1960s Stan Lee teamed up with Kirby to bring Cap back. This collection includes his very first appearances from 1941 alongside key examples of his first solo stories of the 1960s in which the newly resurrected hero of World War II struggles to find his place in the new and unfamiliar world. As the contents reveal, the transformation of this American icon marks a parallel transformation in the nation itself. The Penguin Classics Marvel Collection presents these influential comics in a scholarly context for the first time. The detailed introduction offers insight into the social and political significance of Captain America both as a character and as a national symbol, while an extended critical apparatus and appendices shed further light on its creative development. This volume features a new foreword by Jean Luen Yang. And then on the Penguin Classics Marvel Collection page it says, It's impossible to imagine American pop culture without Marvel comics. For decades, Marvel has published groundbreaking visual narratives that sustain attention on multiple levels, as explorations of the relationship between power and responsibility, as metaphors for the experience of difference and otherness, as mediations on the pain of 
about the lessons and the fluid nature of identity, as examinations of the meaning and limits of patriotism, as ironic juxtapositions of the cosmic and the quotidian, as resources for the understanding of political and social history, and as high watermarks in the artistic tradition of American cartooning. These carefully curated collections present the foundational tales and characters of the Marvel Universe as Penguin classics. Scholarly introductions and supplemental materials provide essential context for the modern reader, while forwards by contemporary authors speak to the enduring significance of Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men and many other iconic creations. The Penguin Classics Marvel Collection serves as a testament to Marvel's transformative and timeless influence on an entire genre of fantasy. And then we get to the comics themselves. And we do have quite a few in here actually, so what I will do, again, I will show you this page. You are more than welcome to pause this and have a look if you would like. And same goes for this page as well. But we have a series introduction which is a few pages long. We then have the forward which again is a few pages long. We then have a volume introduction which is very long actually and now we have gotten to the best bit which is the comic section. Now look at this you guys. The colour is just breathtaking and I am already in love. I know I'm gonna fly through these, I know I'm gonna love these and yeah they just look insane. So here's a glimpse of the art style, the colour palettes, things like that. This is gonna be hard to show you but it continues pretty much the whole way through and as I've mentioned I'm just so excited to finally have the chance now to sit down and read these. At the end we do also have an afterword. There are a few afterwords classed as appendices throughout but I think that this is the final one. It's pretty long and it's by Jim Staranko and then oh what's cool we also have a page of resources as well. I don't know if I will do any further research it will probably depend on how much I get out of the comics themselves and whether I want to go that extra step but they're there if you are interested and would like some further reading which I guess is really nice. And then before I forget to show you these are the end pages for the back of the book. Again I'm not too familiar with these characters but I really love the art and I think they look pretty cool. And then just so you know this book did cost £40, 50 US dollars or 66 Canadian dollars and the cover design is by David Littman. I absolutely love this edition you guys, I think it is beautiful. I've already got some marks on it though which is not good, I will try and keep these in pristine condition but I'm gonna go straight downstairs and show these to Tom as soon as I finish and we're both gonna pour through them so we'll see how pristine they actually end up being. But yes this is the first Penguin Classics Marvel book. It is such a beautiful one, again with the gold foiling, the gold gilded edges. It is just beautiful and now I'm excited to dive on to the next one to see what that one is like. Next up, as you can see, we have Black Panther, which if you guys don't know is one of my favourite ever Marvel films. I love it so much and I was so happy that this was in the first batch of releases for this collection because again, I just want a more in-depth look at the story and the actual comics as well. So this is the cover. This is the spine and then this is the back cover. Once again we have this beautiful gold foiling on the cover itself as well as the gold gilded edges. Again it just makes it look so put together, so much nicer, it has an expensive feel to it and I think it just works really well. And then on the end pages for this one we have these two. Just from first glance I can't tell who these are. And then whilst I'm talking about end pages I will show you these ones on the back as well. Once again we do have this little Little bit about Black Panther's history, the creator's history, the artist behind it, and then we have the Black Panther summary and the information about the Marvel Classics collection. So for Black Panther it says, as Black Panther and the leader of the hidden African nation of Wakanda, King T'Challa combines the legendary stealth of his namesake with the strength and intelligence to overcome his adversaries while earning the trust of his people. This anthology includes the Panther's 1966 origin story by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and the critically acclaimed Panther's Rage from the character's 1970s solo series by Don McGregor, Rich Buckler and Billy Graham. Both series were produced during a turbulent moment in America's struggle for civil rights and they reflect that struggle in different ways. The Penguin Classics Marvel Collection presents these influential comics in a scholarly context for the first time. The detailed introduction offers insight into the thematic development of the Black Panther along with the social and cultural influences that shaped the world he inhabits. This volume features a new foreword by Nnedi Okorafor. And then we get into the content 
difference which again I will show you here and you guys can pause it to see what is fully included. We then have a series introduction, a forward, a volume introduction which is very long and now we have come to the comics themselves. Once again this is just beautiful so I will show you what the first page looks like which again just kind of blows me away to be honest. I will again try to give you guys a little flick through but it is kind of difficult to do it like this but there you go you can kind of see some of the art. I don't want to show too much in case it does spoil anyone but I just think they look so so good and this is definitely making me want to pick these up as soon as possible. As is the case with Cap we do have some appendices with a few extra bits in there. We have suggestions for further reading once again. We have resources for students and scholars which is really cool and we have some notes. Once again this book is priced at £40 or let me just double check 50 US dollars and 66 Canadian dollars. The cover design is by David Littman and you guys know I'm gonna say this but I absolutely love the design of this one as well. Cannot wait to read it and I'm so happy to own it. And lastly we have The Amazing Spider-Man. I honestly don't know which of these books I'm most excited to get to. I feel like with all the hype being around for the latest Spider-Man film and it just being released on DVD and on different streaming platforms I feel like everyone is dying to get their hands on this one now and get to know Spider-Man a little bit better, get to know what happens more in the multiverse with Spider-Man and again I'm hoping that this will give me a little bit more context and background information about Spider-Man and the different villains that he faces as well as where that could lead in terms of the multiverse. So I'm very very excited for this one in particular even though I love the other two I feel like where we are in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at the minute this ties in very nicely. But anyway let's get on with this in-depth look. This this is the cover, this is the spine, and this is the back cover. Let's see what the end pages look like for this one. Oh, that looks really cool. Is that the Green Goblin? Kind of looks like that. And I can't quite make out who the other one is. Let's see what we have on the back. Oh, okay. We have these two characters, which look a bit creepy, actually. <laughs> Once again, we have the forward for The Amazing Spider-Man with information on the writers, the editors, the artists, things like that. Then we have information about the Spider-Man comics, which I will just read out to you. It says, today Spider-Man is one of the most immediately recognisable fantasy figures in the world. The iconic star of several comic book titles, animated cartoons and a series of blockbuster movies, his image has been emblazoned on almost every imaginable surface and product. This new anthology goes back to the original source material for this global transmedia franchise, cherry picking some key stories from the first two years of Spider-Man's publication history, from 1962 to 1964, by his original co-authors Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. These delightful melodramatic, visually idiosyncratic, darkly moralised allegories of adolescence permanently transformed the conventions of the superhero genre by insisting that great power is never just a means to an end, but also a burdensome responsibility. The Penguin Classics Marvel Collection's The Amazing Spider-Man presents these influential comics in a scholarly context for the first time. The detailed critical introduction offers fresh insights into the thematic development of the character and the personalities of the two men who created him. Other features include the rarely reprinted non-superhero stories from Amazing Fantasy number 15, a generous selection of early letter pages and an appendix of supplemental materials shedding further light on Lee and Ditko's artistic process. The volume features a new foreword by the award-winning and number one New York Times bestselling author Jason Reynolds. So very very interesting there. Once again it does also have the Penguin Classics information page which I read the first time around so I'm not going to do it again. Here we have the contents page for you. We have the series in introduction. We again have a forward, a volume introduction, and now we are getting to the comics themselves. Oh, this just looks so cool. I, oh my gosh, I've just seen a character that we are very familiar with, which I will show you guys a sneak peek of in a sec. But these are the first two pages, which again are just insane. I love these so, so much. I love the art style. I love the color. And again, I'm so excited to actually sit down and read these. But here we have a little snippet it for you guys. Go ahead and comment which character you can see right now. But once again, this is what we have. We have so much content 
which all looks incredible and yeah I just I cannot wait to read these guys I'm seriously debating reading these as soon as I finish this video because I feel like I've been missing out on these comics for so long and it's mainly been because I don't quite know where to start so these are going to be perfect for me just as a way to dive into the original stories and I'm so happy that this is actually a thing and that we get more of these stories released I guess throughout the next few years. So in the back we have suggestions for further reading once again. We have some notes and then we have some more information about these three books in this Penguin Classics collection drop. This book once again is £40, 50 US dollars and 66 Canadian dollars and the cover design is by David Litzman. And there we have it you guys, these are the first three books as part of the Penguin Classics Marvel collection. Do you think they started off well? What do you think about the overall designs of these books? Which books do you think they're going to release next? Please do let me know down in the comments, I really want to chat and discuss with you guys. I'm honestly so hot from unboxing these books because they are so heavy. So please excuse the state of me, but yeah, I'm just so happy to own these. They look amazing. As I mentioned, cannot wait to display these on my shelves. Probably not these ones, I will put them downstairs most likely, just because that's where everyone can see them and there's less light there as well. So less of a way for them to get damaged. But yeah, I'm so excited to continue collecting these and to finally get in on the comic. And then I did just want to mention before closing off this video that there are other editions available in this collection. We do have some paperback books that look like your standard paperback penguin classics. I will pop a picture of them up on screen for you now. I was debating buying these ones too, but honestly I just couldn't justify that amount of money. All of these books are £40. I did pay over £100 for these three, which is insane, but I'm really happy that I did. It's my own money. I can spend it how I want to. I want to buy these books and read the comics. So they were something that I was willing to buy, however I don't feel like I need the paperback copies as well, even though I love the look and design of those. So if you want another look at the paperbacks, I will have them linked down below so that you can check them out yourselves. But I really hope that this video was useful for you guys, and I will of course film another unboxing when more of these collections drop. If you've made it this far into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please do leave me some red, black and blue emojis down in the comments. I say it all the time, but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me. It baffles me that you guys watch my videos all the way through. So if you don't have anything in particular that you want to say but would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and do that now. Whilst you're down in the comments, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it for me today guys. Thank you so so much for watching. Once again, you guys truly mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!